In this video, you're going to learn nine incredible techniques that every designer should know because they will make using Adobe Illustrator considerably easier. And they will also improve the quality of your design work just by using the correct tools and techniques. Things like filling shapes with other shapes, duplicating along a path and creating designs like this. Well, that's just a taster of what you're about to learn. This video is also sponsored by Skillshare and first up an otherwise impossible way to fill one shape with a bunch of shapes. So I have a bunch of stars and a letter. First of all, let's turn this letter into a regular shape. There we go. And now from the layers panel, we need to make sure that this is its own sub layer. So let's expand this down, select it. And if we ungroup this, you can see it becomes an individual sub layer. Now for this next bit, I'm going to select all of the individual stars and I need to position them on top of the S. I've tried not doing this and it doesn't work for some reason. Now let's select everything, go to file, all the way down to scripts and select other script. And we're going to use a script called Fillinger, F Fill Fillinger, F <laughs> however you say it. You can download this in the video description. And there's a bunch of different settings here. Some of these are self-explanatory. I'm just gonna check and uncheck a few boxes. There we go, lovely, good job, Dan. Let's leave everything at the default settings and click OK. And you can see it takes the star graphics and then it fills the letter S with those randomly at different sizes and they're not cropped off either. So this is much better than using a clipping mask and I can now select just the stars and use the eyedropper tool to sample the white background. And then to finish this off, let's select the gray shape and we'll go and give this a nice color. Let's go FF412D, Dansky orange, very nice. Or we could do this the other way around, delete the S shape, select all of the stars and then give them a fill color of their own. And you can do this with any shapes, of course. So yeah, very useful indeed. Now, you may use the Pathfinder panel to combine shapes or to knock one shape out of another. However, there's actually a hidden way to use these features non-destructively, which means that you can well uncombine shapes and still keep everything, including the text, fully editable. So here I have a bunch of text and a shape. And typically in Illustrator, we can knock out one object from another by using minus front. However, if we click this option whilst holding Alt or Option at the same time, it actually turns this into a compound shape, which is non-destructive. So what that means is that I can actually double click to go inside and the text is still fully editable. And minus front wouldn't even work with editable text. So this is a great way of working if you'd like a bit more flexibility. And as I mentioned, this is a non-destructive way of working. So if I select the compound shape, go to window and then down to Pathfinder, from the top right corner of the panel, I can select release compound shape. And there we go. Illustrator very kindly gives me back both of my original objects, the shape and the text. Okay, next up is a very useful feature indeed. I kind of feel like it's in the wrong menu. Like honestly, I forget it's there half the time and that is start global edit. Okay, so I have a rather ordinary rectangle. I'm going to switch to the pen tool and add a single anchor point and it wants to continue that line. Simply press escape and then deselect the point. Now I'm going to select the rectangle, press R for the rotate tool and I'm going to hold Alt or Option and click on that point I just created. Let's add a rotation of 90 degrees and do not click OK, instead click Copy and then use Command or Control D to repeat the transform. And then we can say goodbye to the anchor point in the middle. Thank you, sir, you have served your purpose. And because all four of these shapes have the same properties, we can select Start Global Edit. And if we edit the master, which is highlighted in red, as you can see, I'm going to add an anchor point and extend this down. As I'm changing this shape, it's editing all of the others as well. And if there's any fellow gamers watching, well, firstly, hi, hello. This may look a bit familiar. This is a D-pad from a controller, and you can see that I'm creating this by just making one, and all of the others are following suit. And as you can imagine, this is a massive time saver, but also the quality of consistency in my work is going to improve because they're all exactly the same. And just before we move on to the next one, a big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And if you haven't heard of Skillshare, it's the largest online learning community with thousands of classes for creatives that are led by industry pros across film, illustration, design, freelance life, productivity, and a lot more. And the classes are all on demand so everyone can learn at their own pace. Me, for example, I've used Skillshare to get better at drawing, and more recently I've completed one of their learning paths, which is essentially a hand-picked curation of several related classes. And the one I did was called Creative Productivity, Kickstart and Sustain Any Project. And there were six classes in total, and the one by Thomas Frank on building habits that last, that was especially helpful. And this class is just 
packed full of very actionable advice that has really helped me to build better habits and get more done in less time. So if you'd like to start learning today, the first 500 people to use my link in the description whoop, will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Now this next one involves intertwining two spirals and giving them both their own colors. So if you ever need to integrate spirals into your work, well, I think you're gonna like this one. So let's go and click and hold on the line tool and hiding under here, we have the spiral tool. And we can click and drag anywhere to create a spiral. And remember, you can use the up and down arrow keys to adjust the number of segments. And let's go and size this up, there we go. Now from the stroke panel, if we go down to the profile, we can change this to number four. Uh, it's just off screen, but it's this one here that tapers off to a point. So let's select that and thicken up the stroke weight. And then I'm going to select the width tool and then just click and drag on that innermost point just to chunk it up a little bit. Now let's go back to the stroke panel and select round as the cap type and this will round off either end of the spiral. So there we go, that's a good start. Now I'm going to go and select the ellipse tool and I can click a drag holding shift to create a perfect circle. Now, because the spiral is a slightly awkward shape, it can be tricky to center it in the middle and you may have to do this by eye. But first of all, let's select that circle and let's chunk up that stroke weight as well. There we go, much better. And then if I center the circle in the middle of the artboard, and then I can just adjust the size and position of the spiral so it looks central. There we go, I think that looks okay. Let's select everything and then go to object, expand appearance. And it didn't expand everything there, so just go and expand again if in doubt. And doing this has converted the strokes into fills and I can now select the shape builder tool and click once on the white and this will make it its own shape. Now conversely, we can hold down alter option and click and drag through that border to remove it. And yes, they're both black, but if this has worked correctly, I should be able to separate these. There we go, whew, okay, right, that worked, which is great. Let's go and pick a couple of colors. We'll go with a yellow, and then maybe for the other one, a uh, blue. Yeah, that looks good. And depending on the type of spiral design you're going for, what we could do as well is select all of these, and we could apply a stroke color. So let's double click the stroke and go with a, a nice dark gray. And if I thicken up the stroke weight a bit, Ah, so if you do get this and you get any weird bits sticking out, just go to the stroke panel, round off the cap and the corner, and this can sometimes fix those issues. And there we go, two colored spirals happily spiraling into each other. This next technique is one that I use all day, every day. And honestly, this trick will not only give you better looking shapes, but it will make your designs look much more professional as a result. Right, so let's select the pen tool and then just start trying to draw a light bulb. So go up here, around there, click, and then join that flat. And obviously <laughs> that looks rubbish. Please don't judge me, It's uh, it's been a long day. So obviously we're going to get rid of that, and instead we're going to start with this. Yes, this will become the new and improved light bulb. So first of all, let's select those top two shapes, and I'm going to unite these together, combining them into a single shape. And this is the secret source. First, let's switch to the direct selection tool, and then click on these two control points here. Remember to hold down shift as well so they both become selected and then click and drag outwards. And you can see even if we have sharp corners, we can round those off. And I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. And honestly, this technique is so underrated and it's amazing how much you can actually create just by combining and rounding basic shapes. Now, if you've ever wanted to duplicate a shape around a path, perhaps with a specific number of copies and a consistent width between them, this next one will show you how to do just that. So for this one, I have a circle and I'd like to repeat this orange rectangle around that circle. So let's select it and press R for the rotate tool and then find the center of the circle, hold down alter option and click and then type in 360 divided by the number of copies. So I'm going to go with 30 and then select copy. And you can see, well, that's just one. However, if we press Command or Control D, we can repeat that transform all the way around the circle. And as you can see, they are all perfectly spaced apart. And we're now done with that original circle. However, now that we've created it, what do we do if we want to change all of these shapes at once? Well, all we have to do is select one and then use Start Global Edit. And we can now, for example, use the Scale tool. And if I change the properties of that one shape, all of the other instances will be updated as well. Okay, so if you've ever wondered how to warp some text to fit a particular shape, well, good news, it's super simple, and this is how you do it. 
Right, so here you can see I have the most unoriginal quote ever, and the font is Blenny Black if you're interested. Now to make this actually look good, let's start by selecting the circle and then grabbing the knife tool. And if we now click and drag through the circle, this will cut this circle into two shapes. I mean, it's called the knife tool and yes, it does exactly what you'd expect. So let's make a couple more cuts and divide this circle into four segments. Now for this to work, I need to first select all of the text and then go up to object, down to arrange and select send to back. Now one by one, I need to select a segment and the text, go to object, down to envelope distort and select make with top object. And this will fit the text to the shape, which is on top. And there you go. Now make with top object does have a keyboard shortcut. So let's use that to just repeat that a few more times. There we go. So that looks pretty good. I think they're just a bit too close. So let's space them apart a little bit. There we go, much better. Now these are envelope distort objects and I can go to object and expand, leave everything checked and click okay. And these will now become regular shapes with a fill, a fill color that I can of course change. Ha, Dansky orange, we meet again. Right, this next one is kind of a two in one. First, we'll look at how to make anything, including text isometric and keep it editable. And then we'll use Illustrator's blend features to create an isometric design. So I have some text here and the text is editable. First of all, let's go up to effect and down to 3D and materials. And we're actually going to select 3D classic, extrude and bevel. Now from the drop down at the top, we do have some isometric presets. So I'm going to select isometric top. However, the text is actually sloping the wrong way and there isn't a preset for the one I want. So a quick hack to get around this is to add a minus here and remove a minus there. There we go, it's kind of sloping upwards now. Now let's remove any extrusion and change the surface to no shading. And by removing the shading, this will just keep your colors as intended. And this is just a 3D effect. So the text content, the font, all of those properties are still fully editable. Anyway, let's undo that. And with the text selected, go to object, and expand appearance. And this will apply that 3D effect. And I'm going to drag this up and hold Alter Option and Shift and drag down to create a copy and then give this copy a different color. We'll go for like a purple. Right, now this is the fun bit. Go over here and select the blend tool, click on the pink and then look for the plus icon and click on the purple. And your default blend will look something like this. But if you double click the blend tool, you get more options. Now we can change the spacing to specified steps. And if we increase this value, you can see that we get a much smoother blend between the two objects. Now 390 is probably overkill, but at least it's super smooth. However, something does look off. So if we double click to go inside the blend group, select the bottom purple text and use the keyboard shortcut to send that to the back, it now sits underneath. And if we select the text on top and copy this, we can then double click to come outside of the group, paste it in place, and then we can go and give this a slightly lighter pink or a lighter color of whichever color you're using or a different color entirely. And because the blend is between these two objects, we can go back inside the blend group, move one around and the blend will move with it. And honestly, this tool can create some pretty amazing effects. And last but not least, this is how to not only create a blend between two objects, but how to make that blend group fit the shape of a particular path. So here I have a circle rainbow gradient thing on a black background. First, let's select the stroke. And quick tip, if you'd like to loop your gradient seamlessly, just make sure you have the same color at either end of the gradient slider. Now I'm just going to shift this to the left and paste another copy of this in the middle and then use the direct selection tool to remove that bottom anchor point. And let's just change that color to something different. Now again, let's hold Alter Option, Shift and drag to create a duplicate. And if I select both rainbow circles and use the keyboard shortcut to make a blend, I can then go and double click the tool and we can increase the blend value. And there we go, we're one step away from making a slinky. However, blends do not just have to run in a straight line. So if we select our, well, slinky thing and that white semicircle and then go up to Object, all the way down to Blend, and select replace spine. And what this does is take a blend group and make it follow another path. So in this case, the white semicircle. So yeah, there we go. We have actually made a slinky after all. And this is still a blend group so I can play around with those properties or I can double click to go in and change the size of one. And as you can see, the blend will update. And if you enjoyed this video, well, I've got great news. There's actually another one with loads more tricks, tips, and techniques that you can watch right now. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and to you for watching. Take care and I'll see you next time.